In this video, we're going to create motion with the piston linkages example. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Open. At the very bottom, Basic Training. Number six, Assemblies. And then I'm looking for piston linkage near the bottom. Open. The file that we're given doesn't have any motion associated with it, but it is nearly complete. So I'm going to have a look, and I see that I want to make a joint here in this hole, here, here, and a sliding joint between these two parts. As well, I want to duplicate these so that there are, there's another set on this side. Okay, first thing to do is to open up the body folder. And I can see that we've got separate bodies, but we need separate components because we need to be able to connect the components to add motion. I'll select all of these by left clicking on the top, pressing shift, left clicking on the bottom, right click, and create components from bodies. Now I've got these four components. These I can uh, represent or add motion to. These two components here, the piston, I need to make that as a subassembly. That's going to mean that I need to make another component. So I'll right click on piston linkages. I'll go to new component. And here in the name, I'll call this the sub assembly. And I'm going to put this piston into it by left clicking on it, and dragging it into the arrow for this component. And the same for the other part. So I've got a component, two components in this component here. There we go. Whenever we have something that works together, though still made of separate pieces, we can call that a sub-assembly and we can put that into another level of components. I'm going to go to my uh, top level and isolate the entire design so that I can see it fully shaded. Next is to add our joints. I'll press S for the quick menu. Everything uh, that I need at the moment is already in place. So I'm going to use as-built joints. Finding as-built joint shortcut. The components that I'll use, I'll start with these two. So I'll click on both. And the joint type here is a revolute because these need to revolve. And here, now in the snap, I'm selecting the center axis here. That looks good. Okay. I'm going to do that two more times for here and here. I'll right click, repeat as built joint. So this component revolves with this component around the center. Repeat as built joint. This component revolves with this component around the center. There we go. Now I need to be able to add motion between these two parts here. I'm going to right click, repeat as built joint, this component and this component. This time I don't need a revolute, they're not revolving around each other, they're sliding with each other. So there are two that work here. One is a slider and that simply, simply allows it to go in and out. And the cylindrical allows it to go in and out and rotate. Cylindrical we don't need because we don't need them to be able to rotate. We just need them to be able to slide. Here it's asking which axis or which direction will they slide or translate. And any of these are appropriate. So we'll do this one. And this is our preview here. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four joints. We can look at those in the folder there. We've got one, two, three revolution joints, but uh, the sliding joint, because it's between these two components, that actually lives in the sub-assembly right there. And that's, that's uh, a matter of convenience. If I were to animate the model right now by right-clicking on one of my joints and going to animate model, 
I would see uh, a few things happen. One, things look a little bit broken. We haven't limited the joints yet. Uh, and two, I don't necessarily want to re revolve around this particular joint. I want one of these components to stay still. Okay. But the mechanics are there. Everything is moving as it technically should right now. So one step is to uh, create another copy of this sub-assembly, sub and another step is to limit the joints further. I'll start by doing the sub-assembly copy. So I'll click on sub-assembly. I'll right-click on it. Copy. With piston linkages at the top, right-click on it. Paste new. And as I've pasted it, it places it in the same location as it was. I'm going to take this opportunity to translate it over into position. Here, in this particular model, it's negative 100 millimeters. And I will capture that position into the design history as well. Okay. Because we have the subassembly, the joints actually stay, uh, uh, remain there. What doesn't remain, though, are the joints between this uh, axis and this axis. So we have two more revolute joints to make. So I can S as built joint between here and here. And this is a revolute around this axis. And one more time, repeating the as-built joint here and here. And the snap will be around this axis. There we go. So we still haven't done our limiting of the joints, but we have all the joints in place. So let's identify which joint this is. This is our first one here. And I'm going to just rename it to center, because this is the one that I really want to consider the model to be animated around. So animate model. Okay, good. Everything is moving, if not a little bit broken without limitations. So let's see how we can limit this model. This joint here uh, is, is kind of our center main movement, or we can think of it as our, our main movement. So let's start by adding a limit to this joint. We want to know how far in one direction and the other direction this should be allowed to move. Right now, when I double click on the rotation flag, I can actually move it too far because Fusion doesn't really care that we have intersections without us telling it to. So I can see that in this direction, uh, I'm happy to move 20 degrees. When I go in this direction, when I look at the overall model, noting that this piston has a certain length on the inside, I am able to move negative 35 degrees. So 20 and negative 35 are our limits. So I'll press escape to cancel. Okay, so now we're ready to add the limit to this joint so that we don't get uh, unrealistic movement in our design. From our center joint, we can edit the joint limits. And we already figured out that our joint uh, limit, our limitation, should be at minimum negative 35 degrees and at maximum 20 degrees. There we go. At this point, we can right click on that center joint and animate the model. And if we want, we can ground one of the components, for example, this top arm, by right-clicking on it, going to ground. We can capture that position. And with one of the parts grounded, we can click and drag in the actual design interface to preview the motion. If we do this and we haven't limited the joints, we're going to get very unpredictable, yet still logical, motion based on the constraints that we've applied. And that's it.